The rumor mill seems to be in full swing, and things are starting to get really interesting and exciting surrounding next generation graphics cards. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. Recently, I made a video discussing reasons as to why you should wait for next generation GPUs, and also on the flip side, talked about why you shouldn't wait. Well, it looks like that argument for waiting may have just gotten more stronger. Ever since the start of this year, we started to get bits of information and leaks pertaining to NVIDIA's next generation Ada Lovelace GPUs. The initial estimate for a release was Q3 2022. A lot of people, myself included, suspected we'd see a similar timeline for the RTX 40 series GPUs as to what we saw with Ampere, where NVIDIA will probably make some sort of announcement in September and we'll see the SKUs hit store shelves the following weeks. That was only going to be about a 4-5 to five month wait, and so it was suggested that you'd probably be better off waiting for next generation GPUs. Especially because this late into a GPU life cycle, who wants to be paying MSRP for GPUs that are like 20 months old at this point? Don't get me wrong, an RTX 3080 is a fantastic GPU, but it really should be much cheaper this late into its life cycle. Anyways, now it appears as though we might actually be getting the RTX 40 series much earlier than expected. Known hardware leaker on Twitter, copite 7 kimi said the following, Ada Lovelace will come out a little bit earlier, keep patient. And this was something they stated last year in August 2021. They followed up to this tweet earlier this week, stating Q3 early. It's interesting that they chose to follow up to their tweet from last year, implying that this indeed was the plan all along, and that it wasn't coming down the road in September. Furthermore, when Video Cards responded to their tweet asking to clarify if they actually mean early Q3 or as early as Q3, they straight up respond with mid-July. This is a release window that is way earlier than I expected. This now changes everything. If there really is some kind of announcement coming in July pertaining to RTX 40 series, then I am strongly advising you guys to wait if you were on the fence for a new GPU. Think about it, we're already a little over halfway through May, we just have to get through June, and I'm sure that come early July, we'll have a good idea on whether or not they'll be coming that month. I'm actually quite surprised to hear this, as I was strongly believing in the rumor that they would be coming sometime in September at the earliest. We just had the RTX 3090 Ti hit store shelves like two months ago, and for those who bought that card, they're going to find themselves in a world full of remorse. But like I said before, if this rumor really is accurate, then we should start seeing more info pertaining to the RTX 40 series coming over the next few weeks, pertaining to finalized specs, leaked pictures from AI Beast, software features, and more. So definitely keep your eyes peeled for that. Information surrounding the release date wasn't the only thing that Copite has recently shared. They also talked about a quick summary in regards to specs for the upcoming RTX 4090. Here they mentioned that the AD102 GPU will have 16,128 CUDA cores, come with 24 gigabytes of GDDR6X, running at 21 gigabits per second, and 450 watts, which I'm not sure if they're referring to TDP or TGP, and then we have the most interesting piece, which is 2X3090. So it seems like for the top end SKU, NVIDIA will again be going with a 24GB memory buffer, which is fine. That much VRAM was already way overkill for games anyways, but was handy in productivity apps. I just hope this doesn't mean that all the SKUs will have the same memory buffer configuration as the previous generation. I'm hoping that the RTX 4080 will have at least 16GB of memory, and that the same goes for the 4070, or at the very least, 12 gigabytes for the 4070. The 450 watt figure is also quite interesting because for some time now, we've been hearing rumors that, that the next generation graphics cards would have a really high configuration when it comes to power requirements, and that the RTX 4090 would have a TDP of like 600 watts. Hey, I'm hoping that the lower power figure is true, because I don't want to see a 4080 have a TDP of like 450 watts or 500 watts, we're getting to the point where for a device that's mainly going to be used for gaming, the power requirements are just getting way out of hand. Worst case scenario, we'll all have to resort to undervolting our GPUs. For those who have seen my undervolting GPU videos, we have seen just how much power you could significantly cut down on Ampere cards with no noticeable performance loss. Lastly, the 2X3090 is also quite intriguing because this implies that the 4090 will offer performance that's double the RTX 3090. And that would mean that Ada Lovelace will be quite a huge leap. 
Now this could mean anything for all we know, it could be double the performance in a synthetic benchmark, but in real world performance like gaming we'd be looking at a 50% boost, which is still pretty significant though get me wrong. It really all just comes down to how Nvidia markets the cards and what kind of pricing we're looking at. Oh, and also, they mentioned how they're disappointed with RDNA 3, which I'm not really sure exactly what they're getting at. It's intriguing, considering the fact that all the other hardware leakers and rumors that I've seen have talked about how RDNA 3 will be a huge leap over last generation. I don't know if this is really anything that we should be paying attention to right now. Um, we'll just have to wait until we have more info pertaining to RDNA 3. The last thing I wanted to talk about was an article I saw over at WCCF Tech, who have shared some images from the Chip Hell Forum, which is a really popular Chinese hardware forum. This post contains images of what is allegedly the heatsink of the upcoming RTX 4090 Ti graphics card. Yes, that's a 4090 Ti. So I am skeptical because I wouldn't expect to see a Ti card right out of the gate with the 40 series, let alone a 4090 Ti. Nonetheless, the cooler looks very similar to what we already have with the 3090 and 3090 Ti. I don't see any drastic changes here, which is fine because the Founders Edition cards and coolers, they were already excellent and a huge step up from the blower style coolers that Nvidia used to use. And this design does have some advantages over open air cooler designs with what we saw with Turing and AIB models. Aesthetically, I did also like the way the cards looked. Didn't really have too much of a problem with them. They have a very sleek look that I really liked. A nice industrial look, in fact, rather than the tacky gamer look that you see with AIB models. So that is all the information I wanted to share with you guys and talk about for this video. The news about the July release really did catch me off guard. And if it is true, then these next coming weeks are going to get really heated. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.